Welcome back to another episode of Drink Tales. And today, it's been a I know we've been sitting here for a couple of weeks now since the last time we left you guys, but it actually has been a bit since we looked at uh, a bottle, since we've taken a look at a new bottle. Um, we've been doing mostly cocktails, just off the cuff cocktails, but we haven't seen a new bottle for a while. Mm -hmm. But today is the day. We are back with a new bottle of something. And this is an interesting one. Uh, this is a uh, Sorrel. And what is Sorrel? A liqueur. What kind of liqueur? A hibiscus liqueur. Mm -hmm. Interesting. A, a hibiscus liqueur. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Sorrel. Handcrafted artisanal liqueur. Now, um, we're at a bit of a uh, impasse because this is one of the first bottles I've come across where there is no story or lore to read. Yeah, there is none. It's just drink my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could go to the website on our trusty smartphones and yes, we there's could. some lore right there mm -hmm. that I can do. Mm -hmm. That I just, oh, look at this. Here it is. It's right it's here. Right here. All right. So, I mean, like, if you would like to regale the people, let's go. Let's go for it. Oh, there's a lot of fucking lore here. It starts, first off, uh, judging by the website, um, very nice website. Mm -hmm. Very nice website. Um, let's see, we got, uh, five stars. It's the 2015 finalist in the Ultimate Spirit Competition. 95 points. That's really, really good. Five stars. Unlimited cocktail potential. Here's a note from the from the founder. The story began hundreds of years before I was born. This is the story of my ancestors, both African and indigenous. This is the story of my grandparents, who, who immigrated from the island of Barbados to the tenements of Harlem, New York in the roaring 1920s. I may never fully understand the sacrifices that were made in order for me to carry this story forward. This story has gone on for centuries. I am merely its steward. And now you are part of the narrative. I feel honored to be part of that narrative. Coming from Jack. So this is a um, black owned liqueur. We didn't say that up front, but it is. We wanted to read this first before we, you know, so you guys could get the hint. Exactly. And you know how we feel about black owned liqueurs, about black owned liquor and local liquor. You know, we, we stump for those. Mm -hmm. So, when we found Sorrel, we immediately snatched it up. Uh, how it started. Across the African diaspora, there is an ancestral memory of the red drink. Ooh, this is some good lore. This is history. <laughs> this is more than lore. This is history. Mm -hmm. It begins in West Africa, where hibiscus, a potent botanical, was used for medicinal purposes. As the transatlantic trade began, these pungent flowers and the knowledge of their homeopathic powers traveled from their homeland alongside enslaved Africans. British naval officers would add a portion of their stipend of rum to the tea as a preservative. As the islands of Antilles became ports of trade for spice and bodies, the beverage, which came to be known as Sorrel, became a tradition across the Caribbean islands. Sorrel was the original red drink. I'm not going to go further. It's a lot. It's very interesting. Go to the website. Please yourself. go to the website. Sorrel Official. Please go to the website and check this out, especially if you're interested in the history behind some of the things that you drink. Um... It is very interesting to learn that about hibiscus specifically because, you know, because it's actually ironic because lately we've been looking into hibiscus ourselves just for health purposes and things like that. Um, hibiscus tea as a prime example. So when we came across this, we, like I said, we instantly jumped on it because we really wanted to know um, how good this would shape up. And to know that all of that was in mind when putting this together, uh, thank you, Jack. It's, in, it's incredible 
to it. I always find it incredible to um, come across alcohol with a rich history and with that taken to heart when making it. Exactly. That, you know, that's not to shit on something like, um, I'm not gonna name names. That's not to shit on something like a, like a, a, one of your top level that's always in the media liquors. Like, you know, I'll say like Bacardi or something like that or Tanqueray. That's not to say something against something like Zoe's, but because I'm sure those have history as well. But to see something like this come up is always a pleasure. So uh, go ahead and pour. Pour for us. Let's see what we got. First and foremost, this top is on here pretty tight. We always have a problem opening things. Mm -hmm. that come to mind mm -hmm. light and herbal yes light and herbal I'm getting a strong taste of cloves maybe I'm getting that too mm -hmm. a hint of cinnamon but more clove than anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if it's not clove specifically it's in the family Bit of a peppery note. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm getting pepper. Mid tongue. It's very strong on the back end too. It's sweet, sweet, but not very sweet. Mm -hmm. so like if you're looking to drink this for its sweetness. Don't really hold your breath on that. Mm -hmm. But that's not the point, as it were. Mm -hmm. Like, if this isn't gonna be something you indulge in for its sweetness, right? The sweetness is there to complement the herbal spices mm -hmm. that permeate this. The first thing that comes to mind is this, this, this is, um, This is a good sick sipping liquor. Mm -hmm. Over ice. Over ice, this would be really nice. Maybe, maybe even if you wanted to add something. Mm -hmm. This may sound crazy, but I would uh, squeeze some lemon or some lime in it. Yeah. Well, I mean, lemon, uh, citrus in general is always a go-to mm -hmm. for um for spirits. Especially when you're trying to make something that's not spirit forward, a cocktail that's not spirit forward, mm -hmm. you would add the citrus, mm -hmm. specifically lemon and lime. I'm gonna say this off the bat, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and it's gonna sound weird, but hear me out, I'm thinking tiki as an inspiration. No, that's not weird at all. Or rather, a tropical drink at the water. Mm -hmm. I think you could do something really unique and out of the box. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Like it, like 
Thinament Fickle Thorough will pull the Thinament flavor from this. Like as I'm as I'm sipping it, I'm thinking more and more about you know what it puts me in the mindset of? Just with a different flavor. I'm not gonna lie, I put this on par with um help me out. It's in the refrigerator. Talking about Chinola. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chinola, but Chinola has a really tart flavor. Mm-hmm. I just mean like I put them in the same in the same tier level. Mm-hmm. Like they they they're both in my opinion, they're both up there mm-hmm. as far as flavor, taste, uh, potential when it comes to when it comes to uh, making cocktails. But I will say this though: about Chinola lean towards summer mm-hmm. drinking, mm-hmm. it leans towards fall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a perfect fall liqueur. Perfect fall liqueur. I really, I'm serious. I really like that. And the fact that you thought of that you, the first place you went to was Tiki when it came to making a drink with that. The autumn Tiki cocktail would be something probably unheard of. Or maybe it is a thing. I just am not well versed in Tiki to know that. Mm-hmm. And if it isn't a thing, uh, maybe, maybe we make it. Yeah, make, make, a, thing. make it a thing. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking right now. You know what I'm also thinking of too? Um fucking fall sangrias. Oh yeah. A red sangria. Cause you know those things those are a thing. A red sangria with this thrown in there would set things off. Yeah. Yeah. I can like throw that in there with like a red wine. I'm kind of like taken aback by how good this is. I wasn't, ex- it's, I can't say I wasn't expecting this to be this good. Like it's just it, like 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 it inspired me, so to speak, mm-hmm. when it comes to flavors. When you're when you're going outside of the box to make cocktails, and you're yeah, yeah, and you, and you know me, I'm just like feed me alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> But luckily for this, I have an idea brewing. I think I am going to follow up on that autumn tiki cocktail drink. Mm-hmm. I just don't know. I'm still pulling the ingredients together. It's weird, too, that I think that I'm also thinking, too, like, you can, like, sipping on this and, like, eating some, like, brie on crackers. Yeah. Because it leans towards, it leans more towards a, um, gonna be a weird word but a wine-esque yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh beverage mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. man that yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that and that hibiscus taste as well like flows really well into it it's it, 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 it's really well constructed it's really well constructed kudos to this mm-hmm. i'm not gonna lie um I kind of give that a 10. <laughs> and we rarely give 10s, but I, I kind of think that's a 10 for me. It's a 10 for me, too. Like, I can drink that pretty regularly throughout the fall and the winter. Mm-hmm. Like, that's really good. And you say, so you say you're leaning tiki? Yeah. Okay. I think I want to try to do something that's for autumn, but also in the range of tiki. I'm mm-hmm. just trying to figure out what that could be. Mm-hmm. I also want to make sure that I don't drown out the flavors mm-hmm. of this particular mm-hmm. beverage with anything else. If anything, I'm going to fortify what we have here okay. and then add some more twists on the flavor. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to go to my uh, my flavor chart for this one. Mm-hmm and see what we can pull and what could be unique enough to stand out. Okay. And then I'm gonna have to figure out 
what I want to mix it with because I could easily go wrong mm -hmm. as Tiki you know as rum is kind of the stable spirit of Tiki mm -hmm. but I'm also thinking maybe I throw a curveball at that and do something completely out there Well, whatever you do, I can't wait to taste it. And you guys will see it on the next episode. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, that'll do it for this episode of Drink Tales. Be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell so that you're notified of all content coming to the channel. Also, check us out on Instagram. Check us out on Twitter. And naturally, check us out here on YouTube. And Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. And until next time, everyone. <laughs>